Jova Lunar Super Scoochie. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Cue the music. Oh no, let me guess. Another conjunction. Yes, how'd you guess? Well, you're dancing. And with good reason. On Tuesday night, February 23rd, the moon is going to appear super duper close to Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. The timing of this event couldn't be better because not only will observers on the east coast of the US get to see the pair at their closest, even if you live as far west as Denver, Colorado, you'll get to see them less than two degrees apart shortly after moonrise. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay. We've got our skies set up for 9.30 p.m. your local time on the night of Tuesday, February 23rd, facing Shh. east. As you look east, presuming there are no clouds, you can't help but spot the waning gibbous moon in the sky. Just to the north of the moon, you'll see a bright, non-twinkling light. That point of light is our friend Jupiter. Jupiter is nearing its closest approach to the Earth on March 8th, so it will be exceptionally big and bright during this conjunction. Close conjunctions like this require three things. One, the moon's orbital path has to appear fairly close to the orbital path of a planet. Two, both the moon and the planet have to be near the same point at the same time. And three, we have to be on the side of the Earth that's pointed in that direction so that we can see it happen. The moon is traveling at almost 2300 miles per hour around the Earth. So it travels almost a half degree or one full moon width against the background stars every hour. This means that if the moon is below the horizon when the closest part of the conjunction happens, by the time the moon rises, the moon very well may have moved further away. The objects will still be in conjunction, but not as close. Now, if you've been watching the moon over the past two weeks, you probably noticed it's been gradually inching its way eastward across the sky, and its shape has been slowly changing from night to night. If you observe the moon this week, it will be in a phase we call a gibbous, Gibbous means humped, so it'll appear slightly rounded on the side furthest from the sun and perfectly rounded on the side closest to the sun. This is caused by sunlight reflecting off the daytime side of the moon. The moon will appear full on the night of Monday, February 22nd, and we will see all of the daytime side and none of the nighttime side. Since the moon travels half a degree per hour against the background stars, it will travel about 13 degrees through the sky in a 24 hour period. So if the full moon rises at 7 p.m. where you are on February 22nd, it will rise almost an hour later, near 8 p.m. on the following night, February 23rd. Fortunately, Jupiter's position in such a great spot and the Earth is rotated at such an angle that most of the United States will get to see when the moon appears to pass directly south of Jupiter. This will occur at 9.38 p.m. EST, and the moon and Jupiter will be less than two degrees apart. In moon widths, that's almost four times the width of the full moon. Let's now talk a little bit about the other participant in this conjunction, Jupiter. The planet Jupiter has been observed in the sky since antiquity. Babylonian astronomers have records of Jupiter dating back to the 7th century BC, and in his book The Almagest, Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemy used Jupiter's motion with respect to the Earth to refine his Earth-centered model of the solar system. Ptolemy showed that Jupiter took almost 12 years to make a complete circuit of the sky. This year, Jupiter has multiple conjunctions with the moon. However, this one will be the closest pairing visible from the east coast. The west coast of the U.S. might not get to see this one at their closest, but they make up for it on August 5th, 2016, when the moon and Jupiter will be just a little under two full moon widths apart. That's half the angular separation of the February 23rd conjunction. So, mark your calendars. Keep looking, looking up.